And I'm bringing all this up because, you know, you may like some of his stands on other topics or whatever. I don't care. I don't even know what all the stands are. It doesn't matter because these are deal breakers. You shouldn't be listening to somebody who, oh, well, he's good on this. He's good on that. Oh, yeah, except for that whole salvation thing. He's got that wrong. Or except for that whole thing where he says that, yeah, it's not the actual blood of Jesus Christ that washes away our sins. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, that, that one minor detail. That one minor, we'll, we'll see how minor that detail is when we go through the scripture tonight. Now, Hebrews 9, where we started has, I mean, this, this is probably the best chapter that really defines and lays out how important the blood is, but there are so many other verses. But before we get into that, I have quotes from John MacArthur's website authored by him out of his own mouth. This isn't just something that, you know, I heard someone else and I'm just repeating it because to be quite honest with you, that's what a lot of people are claiming now after this whole controversy. Now, look, this controversy is, is like decades old that this guy came out with, but he's still around and he's still teaching. He's been teaching in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, and into the 2000s. He's been teaching for a long time and he's got a big following. But the guy is a heretic. And I want to point out explicit examples for you just in case you have a, a soft spot for John MacArthur or you, you read his study Bible or you, you know, you take, you get other teachings from him is from his, his website. I think his website is called Grace to You. So be aware of this. And I'm going to read this for you. Now, I pulled out excerpts and I forget what the title was, but it's something of, it, is, it has to do specifically with the blood of Jesus Christ was, was what his article is about. And the guy is really sneaky. After reading this article that he posted, listen up. After reading this article, this is how the deceivers and the false prophets work. They're very, the best ones are very cunning because he starts off by quoting. What he does is he takes quotes from all these different sermons and stuff that he's preached because he was getting a backlash for what he said about the blood of Jesus Christ, and rightfully so. A lot of people were, were calling him a heretic, and rightfully so. So he has this whole article up there, and he's, and he's saying, well, I said this and this sermon, this and this sermon. And he starts off listing things that sound just fine. It sounds like, yeah, he's talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, and he's quoting verses, and he's saying all this stuff. But that's how they deceive you. They, they, he gains your confidence or tries to, to build up your trust in what he's saying by saying things that all sound good, that all sound like they match up with Scripture, before then he gets into his perversion and his twisting of Scripture and changing the meaning by just saying, oh, this is actually a metonym. And you know, honestly, this is what the, the you know, people who don't believe the Bible love to do with Scripture anyways. They love to say whatever it is in the Bible that they want to change, they'll just say, oh, well, it really means, I know it says this, but that's not really what it means. Let me give you the real meaning of it. And sometimes people will, will say they have to go back to the Greek or the Hebrew, and they want to tell you the real meaning of the Bible, or they're going to tell you you have to understand the culture in order to understand the true meaning of the Bible. You don't understand the way things were back then. If you knew that, then you would understand how it doesn't really mean what it says. Don't buy into that baloney of people saying the Bible doesn't mean what it says because you know what? It means exactly what it says. The Bible is for the common man. It's for everybody. You don't have to be some theologian or some scholar to understand the words of the Bible. All you have to be is saved. All you have to have is the Holy Ghost residing within you and you could understand God's word. So here's some of the quotes that I pulled, this is all from the same article, but what these quotes are, are referencing different sermons that he's preached or whatever. So here's, here's a quote by John MacArthur. It says, and this, was, and this was God by sign and symbol, always showing the wages of sin is what? Death constantly. So he's trying to lay the groundwork of the wages of sin being death, right? The punishment for sin, which, yeah, Romans 6.23 says that. We get it, right? We know that. And he says, and there's no sense in getting teary-eyed and mystical about blood, and we sing hymns, there's power in the blood, etc., and we don't want to get preoccupied with blood. The only importance the blood of Jesus has is that it showed he died. There is no saving in that blood itself. So he's saying, we don't need to get all pre We don't have to worry about the blood. Basically, all the blood is showing is just that he died. He said, because the wages of sin is death, so Jesus had to die, and that's it. And the blood just is just another way of saying that he died. 
This is ultimately the stand that he takes on this topic, and it's clear when you read through it. I'm not misrepresenting him. You could go look it up for yourself, and I'm actually just reading these quotes for you verbatim, okay? And he continues on. He says, we cannot say that the very blood of Jesus, his physical blood, is what atones for sin. It is his death that atones for sin. His bloodshed was an act of death. And so we do not want to become preoccupied with fantasizing about some mystical blood that's floating around somewhere. It is by his sacrificial offering of himself. It is by his death that we are redeemed. Bloodshed is only the picture of his death. Now, I'm not going to comment on that anymore because we're going to see what the scripture... Let's just read the Bible later on. We're going to get to that. Let's just read the scripture and just determine, are we going to believe John MacArthur and his just twisting or... or just saying, well, this is actually what it means, or are we just going to believe what the Scripture actually says? Because he's saying that it's not the shed blood of Jesus Christ at all, that it's only his death, that that's all that. It's like as if you were to say, well, his resurrection doesn't really matter. It's just the death. He just had to die because, hey, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin isn't resurrection. So, hey, the wages of sin is death, so it must just be the death. He takes that type of, of oversimplification of the atonement for our sins and just say, well, that's it. The blood doesn't matter at all. And it's completely false. Here's another quote. It's going to keep getting weirder and weirder and worse and worse as we go. I mean, that's bad enough. Just saying, nope, the physical blood means nothing. Doesn't matter. Keep in mind, there's another quote, that when I talk about Christ sprinkling his blood on the mercy seat, I'm not saying he literally sprinkled his physical blood on some physical object in the heavenlies. I believe the writer is speaking in a symbolic sense. Again, just go, well, this is all just symbolism. Well, it's all just symbolic. It is an illustration which pictures the atoning effect of Christ's death on the cross. Now, we're going to see this a little later, but keep this in mind too. He says, oh, he didn't actually sprinkle any blood on any actual mercy seat in heaven. If there's no mercy seat in heaven, if there's no sprinkling of blood on the mercy seat in heaven, then why in the world, when you read through the book of Exodus and you see all the requirements for the tabernacle that God gave unto Moses, why did it all have to be erected and built perfectly as the manner is in heaven? The Bible says that there's a tabernacle in heaven. The Bible says that these things exist in heaven, that the image that was made here on earth is a picture of what exists in heaven, that it's actually there, that this isn't just symbolism, that there's actually a mercy seat in heaven. 